I got my Patreon stickers. I watched Raya and the Last Dragon last night. I can't even put into words how much seeing that movie means to me. From the looks of it, I think I measured one of these guys wrong because one is significantly smaller than the other. <laughs> but that's okay because cats come in different shapes and sizes and so do cat stickers. Here's what they look like and as you can see this one is a little smaller than the other one so we're gonna imagine that he's standing a little bit in front of the other and now they're the same size. <laughs> they're still cute. I still like how they turned out. I really like the yellowish green background. I mentioned that I've never done a colored background before so I'm really happy with how this turned out and yeah. Today I'm gonna go to Michael's and buy some more of these glassine bags so that I can pack all this mail for my patrons. Yes, ma'am. A lot of water under the bridge. Some of the old songs. Yes, ma'am. I added this gift by Puffing Muffin. I love her art so much and the other day I was just going through like my close friends list on Instagram stories and I noticed that her account was on there like for me to add as a close friend and I was like what? She followed me back and I just sat there for a moment because every once in a while an artist I really like follows me back and it's crazy because like why but also thank you so much i'm still not over it but anyways this is my post and i'm gonna add the link to my um premiere weight room so people can set an alarm and then i post share and i also added to one of my highlights called youtube yay premiering tonight So I have some leftover tissue paper and I cut them up into these really small pieces. I know I said that I was going to go to Michael's and buy more glassine paper, but if I can save money, why not? So I decided to pack this month's Patreon rewards in tissue paper like this and now I just have to make 70 more. Let's go!
It's 11 p.m. and I just got off a voice call with my patrons. We were just talking to each other while we did some work and I finished packing all of my Patreon rewards for March. I'm so happy to be done. I'm gonna take this to the post office tomorrow and hopefully they will ship by Monday. I guess I would say to my younger self, it's okay if everyone doesn't like you and it's okay to be different. It's not your job to convince other people your your value and your worth and just be true to who you are and the right people will come into your life. Uh, something that I will tell my younger self is, Erica, don't be too hard on yourself. I'm proud of you. Enjoy the journey. Keep going. And remember, hard moments in life are not there to stop you, but to make you a stronger person. And I would definitely tell my younger self to be kinder to myself and that asking for help isn't weakness but strength and I would also tell myself that being in a creative rut doesn't make me less than I am it's just a phase and um, we all go through it thank you hi everyone I don't usually show my face when I have no makeup on because I feel really self-conscious and insecure but I watched Raya and the Last Dragon last night. Like I can't even put into words how much seeing that movie means to me. I remember reading a bunch of critiques online before I saw it and people were saying that the story is a little bit rushed. And when I watched it, I didn't even care about that. Like I wasn't even focused on that because I was just so amazed by like the representation of Southeast Asia. You can see all the different cultures and it's so awesome. It's so awesome to see them eating our food, wearing our clothes, and the entire lore about the water dragon is just like based on this idea of the spirit Naga who the entire Southeast Asian like region worships. There's this one particular scene where Raya calls out the spirit by pouring water as an offering and that's like, that's what we do. That's crazy because that's what we do. And I'm just so excited with everything. I'm excited with the fact that there are Thai names. There's a Shiv Benja, there's a General Atitaya. But the best part of all to me is seeing a Disney princess who is Asian and has tanned or brown skin. That means the absolute world to me. Like I remember when I first saw the trailers for Raya and the Last Dragon and I wanted to cry that there was a tan skin Disney princess. And I'm gonna have to jump on a pretty serious topic in order to get to this, but there's no um, secret that colorism exists everywhere in the world, including Asia. There are a lot of Asian skincare products that cater towards whitening or fair skin. And even in Southeast Asian media, I've seen Thai, Vietnamese, Malaysian commercials just kind of promoting fair, bright, white skin and as a 100% Thai person, I did not have light colored skin. I feel like this isn't even my natural skin tone. I've been living in the US for almost three years. Each winter I wear like a bunch of layers and I don't really get any sun so my tan is kind of faded but in the summer you're gonna see like my natural tan is gonna come back. And as a kid, I went to an international school where a lot of my classmates are of Thai and Chinese descent, making them look more East Asian than Thai. And I just remember getting teased and bullied from like first grade all the way to my last year of college for being black. And I just remember friends saying things to me in elementary school. Elementary school, like first grade to fifth grade, like you would look so much more beautiful if you were lighter. You were never gonna find a significant other because you're so dark and ugly and you look like a farmer. And it's just things like this that have been collecting inside my head throughout my entire life. And it might seem really insignificant to you, but it's a very big part of who I am as a person. When I first started exploring with makeup, I would look for like a lighter foundation shade and I would get so upset when I noticed that like a darker one matched my skin because I didn't want to look that dark. I used to be on the soccer team and the swim team and my ballet teacher would always comment on how dark I looked and how like the examiners who are from England wouldn't like that because I looked so dirty. And all of this is to tell you why it means the world to me to see a Disney princess with tanned skin. Like I am obsessed with Raya now. Because up until this point, I feel like there's not enough representation for South Asian or Southeast Asian folks. And a lot of the time people see Asian and assume that it's East Asian. Like I come here and many people just 
throw out a ni hao at me. I just feel like there's a little girl inside me who's so happy to see Raya as a princess, as a warrior princess because she has tan skin like me. She has Asian features and tan skin and she's doing all these badass things and she's super independent and cool and she's learning to like change herself and learning to trust again and she's building this group of friendship that she calls her new family. She's doing all these like super heroic things and she looks like me. Like that means the world to me. And this morning I just woke up and I'm drawing Raya because I am obsessed. I am obsessed. And just to wrap up the talk about the inner child stuff and the Raya stuff, this is exactly what younger me needs today. So I just wanted to say that. <laughs>
the model or the photographer who took the photo. And so this group, Worldwide Illustrators, wanted to touch on the topic and they wanted to talk about what draws the line between referencing and copying. And a lot of the people are like longtime professionals, like someone is an animator for a studio in Hollywood. And like it was just really nice for me as a smaller artist to sit in and listen to their experiences and see how they handle situations like that. For example, if you're working at a studio, then you have a legal team to back you up and to check through your work just to make sure that there is no copyright issue. And if you're a smaller artist, then you have to be aware of yourself and you have to see whether your artwork and the reference are too similar. If you look at the two photos, do you think that they are the same photos? And they also talked about the topic of what to do if someone copies your work. And I think I think that's really important as well because they talked about cancel culture and how nowadays people don't really leave room for education. Sometimes smaller artists are really young people and they may not know that what they're doing is wrong. They may not know that taking a heavy influence on another piece of art or it may have passed their mind that this photo was taken by a photographer and they may not be aware that what they're doing is copying. Artists in the room were just saying that if something like that were to happen to us, let's say a smaller artist um, copied a big chunk of my work, then the best way to go about it is to message them privately and to educate them on what they're doing. Let them know that this is too much of a similarity, too much likeness. And I didn't speak in the room because I'm still new to Clubhouse and I feel a little shy about speaking, especially in like a group of so many professionals and talented people. But something that I want to add about this topic is that as a small artist and as a growing artist, when you see artwork that you like, the first thing that you do is ask yourself why. Like, why do I like this? Do I like the color combination in this? Do I like the type of work? Do I like the style of drawing people? Do I like the composition of the image? By being able to determine what you like so much about a piece of art can help you understand what feels attractive to you as an artist. And that can help you develop your style more without having to trace or copy the reference picture directly. But yeah, that was a really interesting talk to listen to in the morning. I'm starting to make Clubhouse like a part of my morning routine because I feel like it just opens my brain up in the morning and I feel so much better now that I've learned something about someone else who lives on like the opposite side of the world. I finished my capybara drawing and I really like how it turned out. I've been really into drawing these little chickies everywhere and I blame it all on Stardew Valley. Like I'm so obsessed with the chickens on Stardew Valley and now I want to draw these little chickies everywhere. I also posted this on Twitter with the original reference and I made sure to link the tweet that I was inspired by. I saw this this morning. My friend Mel sent it to me and <laughs> that's so cute. I thought that it was important that I show the reference for that drawing. Not that I haven't been doing this because I feel like I always show the reference, especially on Twitter. But yeah, it's just something that I'm a little bit more conscious of now and I'm gonna be more careful about it. And while I talk, you guys can just watch this little capybara try to fit into this bucket of water. <laughs> He's so round.